Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kim Montgomery, co-founder of Design Tech High School. Uh, like I mentioned, it's right across the street here. And you know, I was just reminded during that presentation is how exciting it is to be to live and work where we live and work. Because we used to be, before we moved in right over there, we were in an, an old auto body shop in Burlingame right across the street from Proterra. So our kids have, like, you have really nice water bottles and hats, too. Because our kids visited, came back with some of those. So I'm just going to. Um, and I just give you an overview of what we're up to at Design Tech High School and some of the ways that we think you know, that education should go in the future. So this is the old auto body shop. The, um, a lot of people ask me, why did you start Design Tech High School? And the simple reason is one day I saw a former student on the cover of Time Magazine. So before I was up here in the Bay Area, I worked um, down in San Diego at the Comprehensive High School, a traditional comprehensive school, 3,200 students. And when I was hired, these 15 ninth graders came up to me and said, we want to start a speech and debate team. I said, OK, great. If we do it, we're going to be number one in Southern California. Somebody has to be number one. It's going to be us. So we worked on it. When they graduated, there were 250 kids on the team. They were number one in Southern California. And then I was walking through a bookstore when I was up here and saw one of my former students, Ryan Panchadsaram, on the cover of Time Magazine. Um, he was part of Obama's Code Red team that helped save healthcare.gov. And then um, he ended up being Chief Deputy Secretary of Technology at the White House for a while. And so when I was in the bookstore and saw a former student on the cover of Time, that was while I was working at a local high school. We were spending a lot of time increasing test scores. We were the lowest performing school in the district at the time, so it was something we definitely needed to work on. But I just had this moment where we were spending all this time increasing test scores, but then look at the outcomes of this student who was on the speech and debate team. Because I called up some of my former students who were on that team also and found out they were just doing amazing things. And not only you know, was Ryan Chief Deputy Secretary of Technology at the White House, um, another student was a Rhodes Scholar who did a joint degree, a Harvard PhD in economics, a law degree. I don't really know how you make that a joint degree program, but he did. Um, another one is a professional DJ. He's been the opening act for Infected Mushroom. Any Infected Mushroom fans? All right, they're going to be in Berkeley. No, they're going to be in Berkeley, I think, next week. So you can still get tickets. So another one's professional DJ. Another one, um, there's this really cool moment where um, Ryan uh, tells a story that they're in the Roosevelt Room at the White House. Um, President Obama's chief of staff would um, call the different departments together you know, for updates. So this topic was what should go in the State of the Union. So Ryan said, I was you know, in the Roosevelt Room talking about pitching some ideas for the upcoming State of the Union, looks across the room and sees his speech and debate partner from high school, Austin, who's there at the Department of Treasury. And they had this moment where they looked at each other and thought, wow, Monty would be so proud. That was the nickname they had for me. And so it's just this amazing thing that I started asking, what is it? Speech Innovate's great, but it's not magic. I mean, how come you think you're having these amazing outcomes? And they all said it was an act of creation. The fact that they came in as ninth graders, they set a goal, they worked on it, they created it. It created this mindset, well, that's how the world works. You don't just passively receive it, you actively design it. And so I thought, well, that's what schools should be focused on. These test scores are important, but moving a kid from a basic to proficiency, getting a couple more multiple joints, choice questions correct, might be really good for the school, but it's really not about the next four years, it's about the next 40 years. So that's when I did my doctorate at Stanford, so I had some experience with design thinking. I thought we should have a school that really focuses on design thinking. So that's what led to the start of Design Tech High School. Because we believe that 15 years from now that the world is going to change quickly and dramatically. We don't know exactly how it's going to change, but we do believe that this is a report from Department of Labor Statistics a few years ago that 50% of jobs will be automated. And so if you think about it, these kids that are 18 right now, or even younger, they're going out to launch into the world. 15 years, hopefully their career is just getting solidified. Those careers could disappear. Because here we're talking about legal work, other white traditional white collar jobs. These jobs could disappear. So what are we saying? That the world's going to change quickly, unpredictably. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. But well, we want you to be, go out into the world with this creative confidence that you can design something. If your career disappears, you can design a career for you. So our mission is to develop students and believe that the world can be a better place and that they can be the ones to make it happen. We want our students to have this sense of optimism, that problems can be solved, and then this sense of self-efficacy that, yeah, I'm the one that can do it. And the way we get to that is we have the traditional academic curriculum, so it's competency-based, so the students can't move on to the next standard or the next unit until they meet a certain level of proficiency. 
And in some ways, that's kind of like a traditional school. We have traditional classes like physics, um, English, world history. The difference, though, is that we say, you can't move on until you show them proficiency. So that means we have to stick with the kids. You're never giving up on the kid. You're never going to say 60% is good enough. It's, you have to meet this standard. But then we layer onto that this problem-solving curriculum, which starts with design thinking, which is a human-centered way to solve problems rooted in empathy, then moves all the way to entrepreneurship. Because design thinking is great, but it's not going to teach you how to write a business plan. So we think when that academic, that content mastery intersects with this entrepreneurship skill set, that's where true innovation will occur. And that's what these kids will need to succeed in the future. And we achieve the, we go for the academic content. We really try to personalize the education for our students. And the reason we personalize is um, a lot of this is based on the work of Todd Rose's book, The End of Average, where he tells a story of how the Air Force, where they're having, they're worried about too many airplane crashes with their, um, with their fleet. So what they did, they thought, well, maybe it's the cockpit. So they, they measured all the, all the pilots, their arm length, their leg length, their height, their weight, and so on. And they said, OK, this is the size of the average pilot. So we should design the cockpit this way so everybody can reach the controls. But what they realized is that that average profile didn't exist. They didn't have a single pilot in their fleet that met the average dimensions of a pilot. So what we've learned, if you design something for the average, you've actually designed it to fit no one. So we feel that that's what's been happening in education, that a lot of times things are designed for the average. So what have we done? The schools and classrooms, who do they fit? No one. So the solution is you have to make the cockpit adjustable. And once the Air Force realized that and started making the cockpit adjustable, the number of accidents decreased dramatically. So that's what we're, are, that's what we're trying to do at Design Tech. Because we believe there are some core principles. One, that traits are a myth. This idea that you are introverted or extroverted or honest, dishonest, whatever, those traits are a myth and they're re very, very heavily dependent on context. That you might be extroverted at work, introverted at home. You might be introverted in a business setting, extroverted in a casual setting. So the traits, and the research backs this up, it's a myth that the context is heavily dependent on the traits you display. So if we can change the environment, different traits will come out. There's also, no matter what you read with all the parenting books out there, that says your child should be taking this many steps and crawling this many miles per hour at a certain age and knowing this many words, there's no single normal pathway of human development. It just doesn't exist. It's all out there in different paces and different ways for every, every human and every form of development. So if we're designed for the average and these are the facts, it's not gonna fit anybody. So what do we do? We hold our students to equally high expectations, but we have different pathways to reach those expectations. So what we're doing across the street there, one of the things is that we're really trying to make the school adjustable for the students. The pace, the way they differ, um, demonstrate proficiency, the learning, the um, ways that they might learn, small group from the teacher, direct instruction, so on. We're trying to create an adjustable school. But really what I love about our students, this is a uh, koi fish, it's our unofficial mascot, we're the D-Tech Dragons. But um, we talk a lot about the koi fish. I tell a story of how if you, the koi fish will grow to the size of its environment. If you put it in a small, small bowl, it's gonna stay small. If you put it in a big pond, it's gonna get huge. So with limitations, you can't put it in the ocean and have it turn into a blue whale. But we've all seen those pictures of somebody out fishing. Wow, I caught a goldfish and it's this big. So what I tell the students is that we're going to put you into these situations, we're gonna put you in an environment that you're not ready for, but you are going to grow to the size of your pond. And right now, we're in a really big pond here on the Oracle campus, because right now we're in intercession, so we have about 100 students in the Oracle Conference Center being taught things by Oracle employees. We have other experts, other professionals over at the school teaching the classes during our intercession, which happens four times a year uh, for two weeks each. And that's also when the students learn design thinking. And because we believe that every student has some potential inside of them, and our job as educators is to unlock their potential. This is a keychain that was laser cut by, she's a sophomore um, student now. Uh, and the student came to us, she had no interest in making or anything like that. I said, why don't you go and um, laser cut something? And she did that, and now she, um, she made a gift for her mom, and ever since then, she's just been laser cutting like crazy. And um, it's because there's, we really feel that that's, there's these lost, there's research shows there's lost Einsteins out there. And the lost Einsteins are the, the people that it tends to be low income, women and minorities, who have the capacity to be inventors and entrepreneurs, but are not at the, at the same rate. So 
This is an example of a wearable technology class, which is happening in room 202 right now. Um, these are two students. Uh, they're building something. Um, you can see it's wearable technology. It's a hairband. The student on the right, she's a senior now. Um, she wants to be a computer engineer. When she came in, she came to an Oracle class and signed up for Raspberry Pi, went in and said, where are all the baking materials? And I said, oh, Raspberry Pi is actually a small computer? OK. <laughs> That's not exactly what I thought was going to happen. But she signed up for it. She stuck with it. And now she's graduating with the idea, with the intent to be an engineer. And we say this. This is an example of the, the lost Einsteins and putting the kids in these big ponds that they can grow to meet the expectations for. And these are a couple of our students who are working on a patent for a pickpocket-proof purse. Uh, they're presenting at Open World. Um, again, that was they get the, the, ca the counseling, the mentorship, build their social capital from the Oracle employees. And we feel that with this personalizing the education for the students and putting this in this big pond, giving them the support to grow, that it really is going to make a big difference for the kids for the future. And I just have to say, if you really want to know the mechanics of how to put, if any of you are thinking, how do I put a school at my place of business, in the front row, we have Randy Smith right here, Randy and Pat and Jonathan. They are really the ones that have made this, this whole thing work as far as getting the building built. And Jonathan can tell you everything you need to know about, wow, what do you do when 550 high school students show up on your corporate campus? <laughs> so thank you. I appreciate your time.